Good evening, folks. 30 seconds of showtime. Grab your seat, leave your drinks to the bar. Hold your breath, put your hands together. We present Sandra Bay's finest star. <coughs> Who has danced with the Mary New Guinea? Who has dined with the Queen of Vermont? We trace the voyages of Sinbad. Corresponded with the men who will count the rocks to the beat. Stand by me, I'm the show. Stand by Steely. Stand by Steely for all more of me. How's it going, everybody? Hey, Jeff. Mm -hmm. So they can hear me, but they can't hear you. It's not too late, folks. Run. Run for your lives. There we go. How's that? Uh, so uh, I can see my stuff right there. My computer's trying to be weird. But uh, once again, uh, hey, my name is Jeff with the G. Live theater online, everybody. So uh, right here, I've got the amazing and wonderful Rob Romeo from All the World Danger Show. How's it going, Rob? Doing well. How are you all? cool yeah hey there we go so why not z-o-1-z or zoid why not zoid maybe i don't know it's in the chat glad to have you you're the best uh as my stream lives like to say um so that's ray i think what's up ray hi <laughs> hey all right cheers all right um so uh this whole idea is like so we're just gonna have a conversation about something like that we met uh we met a couple of weeks ago for the first time although even though like uh we have a mutual friend who's been singing your praisins uh praisins cheers uh little praisins praises praises uh for a while now uh but uh we had a chance to meet uh just a couple of weeks ago when i was in new york so uh really great meeting you and ultra violence what's up uh good to meet you as well uh thank you for being part of the show but uh we had a great time hanging out and running around the boardwalk in coney island and so uh it's really cool to it was a, it was quite a wonderful token day on on coney island for sure was it i don't know what to understand what that means uh like it was just a day. very good like uh, the kind of day you would want to throw together um oh. being involved in in like the sideshow people and then um paying too much money to go on rides that are just enough wonderful to capture the magic of what that place is it's uh yeah it was my first time in new york in general uh, period and of course coney island and was uh that was actually the, that was the theme of my weekend all weekend was basically it's like perfect weather walk right into everything there was like no waiting for me like all weekend for anything it was kind of cool <laughs> it just it was really weird uh but but it was a lot of fun hanging out with you and everybody and just like the whole sideshow crew out in uh, County. Like, it was like, wow, I get it now. It's like, I, I, I'm here in Texas. <laughs> like nobody outside of like a handful of us, like all the other sideshow people are like, just, I mean, Texas is so huge. Nobody, there's no concentration of anybody. So it's just really right. hard to get, it's hard enough to get like four of us together, much less like, with the, a scene like the, or whatever yeah <laughs> much less the 10 or so people that were there when we hung out so it's one of those weird kind of uh so it's kind of nice i really liked it um so for people who may not be aware of who you are and what you do so what uh what to who are you and what do you do <laughs> well i'm me um so, i good night, I'm everybody <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I, I'm some things. I, I'm, I'm a variety artist. So I, I started out as a sort of a, a hack kids party magician, which I still am. Uh, I still make a decent amount of my uh, living on that. But I, uh, I guess the last couple of years, I've been more out as a full time performer, notwithstanding uh, COVID times. But um, yeah. I, I, 
I don't know, man. I've been drinking from the cup the last four years or so is when I started doing sideshow stuff. So uh, I've gone the gamut from uh, I do knife throwing and bullwhip cracking to starting to do some of the fun self-harm things that are rather uh <laughs> dumb <laughs> uh, personal and sideshow and yeah dumb yeah um i also like to include some sort of dirty magic and clown stuff and what i do um i often am found performing music so i sing and play a number of instruments i'll play accordion or tenor banjo guitar um and uh just uh, i really can't say that i'm one thing i really want to find a balance of what I am and who I work with, but I, I think variety is at the heart of it. Um, but I really attach to sideshow stuff because it's pretty visceral. And um, even coming from a, badger, a magic background, um, I always had a skepticism about that ornate uh, box with the Chinese lettering on it. Like, what, why the fuck are you carrying around an ornate box with Chinese lettering on it? Uh, I, I kind of feel like the objects that you're working with they need to feel real. and. Um, I guess that magic strategy sort of transferred into the sideshow world really easy because um, you are presenting presumably uh, real and or visceral things. Um, yeah, so that's a lot of what I'm doing. I guess the last year or so uh, since I've been hunkered down, things got a lot weirder, started manufacturing uh, weapons and then created a whole workshop. And now I'm melting metal and blacksmithing and doing all sorts of crazy things. No, that's uh, that's amazing. Yeah, we a uh, mutual friend. I, oh, yeah, because I know some of the people who've gotten some of your pieces of work, which they they really love. So, kudos on you for at least finding another avenue, especially during this time, as all of us uh, went into like kind of like, all right, cool, can't do shows now. What sort of things? And some people went on do real life jobs. Other people went into blacksmithing. I learned how to do the internet. Uh, that's what I did because why not i can't make anything i can i can make a i can make coffee i can uh i can make a joke or a writing that's for that's I, <laughs> I can't make stuff uh but but yeah so that's why i started doing all this sort of stuff and then I, the idea of just chatting with people from across the world about things that's what i like doing so and a lot of other people who may not know who you are going oh hey that that rob guy it's really cool Whenever uh, you guys make it to whatever town somebody may be watching it from, they go, oh, yeah, I kind of watch, weirdly watched this weird internet show, and this guy was on there, and so let's go check him out. So that's the idea. Or the, the idea is keeping your name out in the world. That's, that's, that's why I do it. Yeah. People name, the internet name is far the from uh, – the internet's far from unnecessary. We all have to tangle with it, even if we don't love it. Um, <laughs> it's just sort of a fact of life these days. Oh, it's and it's uh, pretty much it's it's gonna be part of like as for performers, the internet's now part. It's got has to be part of your uh, your skill set at least a little bit, or at least knowing somebody who can help you do all that because that's just the mm -hmm. way the world is. I don't think while like digital and virtual shows may become less, there will still always exist because you know. People from like me, I watch shows like they like, performed like in things like I, I've watched some really cool virtual shows that are based out of England and like Africa and stuff like that mm -hmm. that I would never have had the chance to watch, but because of the world, I had the opportunity to see some performers I probably never would have otherwise. So that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's weird because at the beginning of everything, when I first started producing shows and um, putting events together. Um, I, Facebook was invaluable to that. It was a, a tool that we could aggregate lots and lots of people to. Um, but over the course of time, uh, titties in danger and anything remotely uh, with an edge uh, became impossible to do without monetizing uh, in a heavy degree. And then sometimes they wouldn't even let you do that. So um, it's been much more restrictive um, through a, the customary like social media pattern that we came out of um, in the last number of years, but it's it's taking careful consideration to figure out what's next. Um, how do you put the right amount of people in a room? And how do you put the right eyes in the room? And how do you pick the room? And how do you put the eyes in the room? That's uh, that's the thing that's always constant because stuff shifts all the time. Like 
right now zoom's the thing when trying to do stuff but then it has its limitations and then uh there's other people do using other formats to create live shows which are also good but they also have their limitations um it's gonna be interesting to see what it's gonna be progressing i think in a lot of ways um who was I talking to? I was talking to somebody saying like the internet is still be invaluable. How like for the longest time radio was so invaluable to live shows. Cause when they said radio was going to kill live shows, it didn't, it just became just a marketing tool for the live shows. I think the internet's kind of be like that, but it's really cool about like, going, all right, cool. Here's a bit I can throw up someplace. So like, all right, I know I'm going to be in LA or wherever. I'm just going to like, just, just inundate all the local producers and like Facebook groups about here's a, a stunt I do. I'm going to be in LA next week. Come see the crazier stuff that I can't put up. And so I think right. that's still going to exist. And so it just, it's, it's just one of those things that uh, on one hand, we have to become our own PR agent for all of that. Unless you've got somebody who's willing to do that for you, which is cool, but we're poor sideshow performers. We can't afford PR people. I'll tell you what, though. We've been freaking talking about it because it's a, it's a lot. And to do what we've done, because like we've, we've done a couple tours. We've been out for a month and change at a time doing nights and doing the whole Danger Act. Driving in yeah. six hours and then showing up and staying straight enough to throw knives around a person. Uh, was you know it takes a toll on you and to do it um, for bars <laughs> you know um, is something that it's an uphill battle to even find the, the the reason to say it's worth it um, so like I'd really love to have a little bit of the pressure in terms of finding the right um, places and spaces uh, taken off of me uh, to some degree so I, we have been looking into the idea of, of at least like getting familiar with a some some of the right agents to get things moving just because it's a whole lot of work and Keita's a saint she does like tons of graphic design work for the project she um puts together snippet videos uh, she helps me get uh press kits together to send to respective venues and stuff uh yeah it, it just it's so much work and when you're fighting censorship standards too to get it all out into the world it's there's a whole lot there and i feel like um there might be someone that knows a better avenue than I do to find the right places for this, but uh, I'm open to doing it both ways. I just, it's been on our plate that we've been thinking, you know what? It's really, really hard to do all of this and focus. I know it's fair. Uh, it's uh, I've been leaning heavier into that aspect of doing stuff because it's one of those, I've got nothing but time. I've, I've had nothing but time for the past year and like, learning how to do all the internet stuff is finding the ins and outs as far as the best ways, what's the best things for a certain stuff a lot of times. And um, there are certain formats like uh, Vimeo allows you to do ticketed uh, events and do stuff. And you can almost put just about anything in Vimeo. The problem with, the only issue with Vimeo is, is like, there's like almost no social media. There's no social engineering with SEO. So there's no, you have to find, you have to know what you're looking for on Vimeo to, get to it you're not just going to find stuff randomly as far as you just type mm -hmm. in a thing and suddenly it's there you know you have to go all right cool i'm gonna go look at the odd world danger show stuff let me go find their page on vimeo i'm not going to find it randomly and so but yeah. a lot of like a lot of performers doing like danger acts or even uh even some of the burlesquers can have used it pretty well and i use it as a backup for some of the shows i do because of uh, some of the copyright issues with some of the music I play, totally legit. But because auto, because all that stuff is automated now, if I try yeah, to just pings it, something, yeah. it just automatically pings it. I'm just going. I just don't have time to spend like the four or five days trying to fight every week as far as some acts and some acts and like acts I think would hit me don't hit, and then other acts that I don't think will hit. And I'm just going. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do it live here, and then I'll put my backup on Vimeo, and Vimeo never has an issue. So. So people can watch the old episodes. They can also watch these old episodes that are on this this thing too. Even though it's also <laughs> my, you know, we're all we're, we're really we're broadcasting live on Facebook and uh, YouTube. It's my first time doing this like broadcasting other multiple streams. So hopefully, we'll oh, doing oh nice. Happy. 
so yeah, it's my first. Like I thought about doing it for a while, but I went. You know what? I'm gonna like this because we're just talking, so it makes it easy. Uh, I don't have to worry about any sort of copyrights unless you start singing some weird song, mm-hmm. and then I'm gonna have to go. Ah! <laughs> but otherwise, I would no, never it's... do that. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, so uh, anybody's watching the show because obviously we have people watching. Thank you for turning in live, and if you're watching later, also thank you for watching later. If you have questions for myself or for uh, Rob here, uh, please drop them in the chat. Uh, as I said, I'm on multiple formats, and I've got a thing supposedly it'll pop up in the chat regardless of how you're watching this. Supposedly. Uh, otherwise, we'll just keep talking about whatever. I don't know. Uh, what's, the, what's the newest project you're working on as far as like a makery sort of thing? You've got something new in the works or something you've been trying to figure makery. out? Or- um, makery. I've been, uh, working on a series of, of sideshow props as my latest run. Um, it was sort of inspired by, I, I passed by, um, uh, hot Todd Lincoln's spot in Baltimore on the way down, um, yeah. to a wedding in San Antonio that I was taking the bus on. And, um, we stopped over for a visit and he happened to have had a bunch of, um, a bunch of old flat bar that he had turned around. Um, and he had no use for most of it. There's only so many paperweights a strongman really fucking needs ultimately. Like they, um, as someone that's done some of the strong work in the past, it just turns into this pile. And it's a nice photograph when you've got a big fat pile, but after that, it's just a, a trip hazard really. Um, so I guess uh, he was willing to offload some of it to me. And I've been starting to rebend that stuff into new items. Um, so, uh, some throwing knives have come out of it. I started making, uh, some fire torches, um, a couple of other pieces so far from that project. Um, really the makery, I think the next thing is I've been collecting a lot of oddities and I'm working on a show that includes a bit more of, a of a cabinet of curiosity vibe. And I was thinking of creating a literal cabinet to enclose said curiosities. And the entire show's worth of content is open and visible throughout. And um, pieces are brought out one at a time to be explained and and discussed throughout the night as part of the evening. That's a good way to go. That's how, like, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's some old school shit right there with like literally like some guys would show up like with literally a trunk they'd open up and go and here's the weird you know mm-hmm. here is Napoleon's penis or whatever they had uh, and talk about the thing and then or you can occasionally bring out a prop that they would do stuff a lot of it's just mm-hmm. talking it's not a bad oh, that's a good gig hmm. some of them are, are, are pieces that are specifically um, like objects with stories but uh, some of it I just assume uh, will also be interesting subjects that blend into these objects, whether we're talking about um, odd science or med- medical malfeasance or um, some ancient horrors or alchemy or any any such topic um, that uh, we sort of have this cadence, but uh, as referenced by the things that I've got in my um, cabinet. No, that sounds that sounds very very cool. They make a like. Uh, I'm I'm really intrigued by that. That's now like me. I'm just going. God, that's e- oh, I would love like I'm, like it would be completely different. But the i the idea of just having the traveling trunk of oddities and just sitting there and talk, basically mm-hmm. talking about bits and then then doing a stunt or two and then going back and talking about stuff. I really like that a lot. That's my plan is uh, also to have a second case that would be my snake oil pitch, and I'd have uh, some some merch items that one could uh, could. Um, uh, procure but also tonics and uh all sorts of fun things in the box that one could buy as talismans or uh any sort of useful thing the snake oil is really interesting it in fact does no fewer than 30 things but it's absolutely not fucking to be used as a personal lubricant do you hear me don't rub it on your stuff rub it on your credit okay. card sure but not your junk no <laughs> What about somebody else's junk? Do we like this person? Yeah. Don't rub it on the junk. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. I will not do this. I've got a question for you. You were talking yeah. tech, okay? Um, yeah, yeah. We'll talk tech. What do you think? What do you think is a way that um, 
would be effective to get eyeballs in rooms. Is it paid advertising on any of the existing social media platforms, but just keep it PC enough? Is it, um, is it working in newer stuff? Because I know a lot of the social media functionary pieces keep you on that social media. They, they involve you checking in periodically with people on that medium. They're not yeah. generally designed to funnel you into a physical space. Um, so usually you end up being the role of the advertiser when you're trying to get someone out. Um, yeah, what do you yeah, think yeah. are some cool ideas in the in the entertainment space to try and bring people into rooms? Like into live rooms or into internet rooms? Live rooms. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm understanding live rooms. So how to funnel people to go from online to go into real life. Um, that's a good, that's, it's one of those things. Um, I think it's not one thing. Uh, I think it's, it's, the way, because the great thing about the internet, the fact is that everybody who has any slight interest in anything has access to whatever that sort of thing is. The problem is that dilutes it dilutes interest so much that it's hard to focus. Like in the day of three channels for TV and stuff like that, it's really easy to funnel things. Or the fifteen you know radio channels so is really. But now when there's you know literally millions of different ways to interact, so in a lot of ways not only do you have to do kind of targeted advertising, which can be done. Um, it is, it just takes a minute to figure out what, how you want to do targeted advertising, whether it's through, well, you will know, we'll use Facebook as an example. It's just an example. Facebook don't me. Um, you really have to look as far as what the market is going to be Zuckerberg. sending to. Now we're broadcasting live on there. So please don't. I mean, anyway, does the internet mind if I smoke? You can smoke. I don't mind. So you're you're in your own you're in your own domicile. So you're allowed to do what you wish. That's a but great, I'm also I, in the internet. You are in the internet. We're inside the internet. I just don't want to be a bad house guest. Um, no, you're fine. Okay. I don't care if you smoke. So, uh, so in a lot of ways, and how to do this right as far as trying to bring people into into the venues and the going seeing stuff. So a lot of it's 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 a lot of it's targeted advertising. A lot of it. Because uh, that makes it a little bit easier. That's going to catch the casual person. Like they're going, all right, cool. I've got kind of want to do something weird tonight. Oh, there was a weird Facebook ad that popped up my thing when I was looking at stuff. I'm going to go do that. Or it hit, uh, two is is you got to be kind of involved at least tangentially with whatever. See, like uh, Facebook groups, I've noticed have been really big with ad, like just that's that's where people are hyping. Uh, Ultra violence is offended. I, I am sorry, ultra violence. Uh, it happens. Uh, it's Rob. I don't know. What were they uh, offended by? You're smoking. Where'd we lose you? Oh. Yeah. All right. I'll make you feel better at the end. I promise. Okay. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that's going to be a weird ass blow off later. Uh, anyways. Uh, so, yeah. So, if you want to get people in the rooms, it's, 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 it's weird. Uh, it's going to be weird advertising. It's going to be targeted advertising. Cause you have to get really targeted and do blanket stuff. So it's like, all right, specificity cool. sounds like, like it's key here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because everything, everything has to be everything can, because everybody's interested so very, you have to, you have to laser focus on these small groups of things for it to be hit. You can't just like, just throw shit out in the wind and hope it catches. Um, and then a lot of it also comes down to word of mouth. So it's like, all right, cool. Like you're going to, you're going to like, if you're for lo you like hit the locals up going, Hey, it let you know. Going, all right. Like, for example, you came to Austin, you go, Hey, I'm coming out. You're like, you go, Hey Jeff, I'm coming to Austin. I'm going to do shows. Like, all right, cool. Then I, you know, if by being a good friend and who's really into stuff, cause I want you to make money. That's we all would, us as performers want to make sure we all make money. I'm going to hit up all the people I know that might be into the scene to come out and see the show. And then, and so on and so forth. So it's like, it's, it's word of mouth and very targeted advertising. It's going to be the best way to do so. So it's like old school, new school sort of way. It just, but mm -hmm. yeah, just throwing like, but just throwing random ad, like blanket ads, is not going to do it anymore because people aren't going to see that. It just, just people just won't see it anymore because it's just like it's like going, oh yeah it's uh oh yeah it's just uh, it's, it's also the baseline yeah, amount yeah. of money that you're throwing into a, a generalized ad is going into the same pool that everyone else's generalized ads are going into right and, and you so, might be a lowest bidder essentially which will put you in, in front of fewer people 
Yeah. yeah. So really, Lily, it is. It's all about just lose. It's it's it, you just have to really get in targeted marketing and just and spending a minute mm-hmm. to figure out your uh, uh, figure out what your audience is in the area if you're traveling. It's like it's like the people used to fly, like the old carnivals would have the guy they would have the the lead guys go out like two or three weeks out in advance ahead just to like laser focus to try to get as many people to carnival when it comes to town. Then so it's just kind of a similar way. It's just now we can do it all online. I'm also uh, thinking that over time now, I, I, I mean, especially considering that we're still um, dealing with the tail end of a pandemic here. Um, yeah, it's my intention. I want to control the environments that I'm in a lot. I really would rather do smaller and more intimate things, which means uh, searching for a pool of thirty to fifty instead of looking for a hundred people to get into that room because I can space them properly if I need to. I can. Uh, bring them in where I need to. So I, I, some of the things that you could show someone are really not suited for 200 eyeballs. They um, they work really well with many fewer um, people and well, yeah. being nearer to that. Um, so uh, I think I'm going to be trying to make my uh, events as I do them a little further off the beaten track. Maybe you have to uh, find out where the venue is um, by purchasing your ticket and find out a little more about where the show, the show as you um, follow uh, certain steps or something to that effect. Go b- more into the speakeasy genre, I suppose. Uh, uh, I could see I that could, or I, running like, yeah, or just doing things like, all right, cool. Like are doing like the bookstore tour or something like that, where you can only have so many people in the room anyway. So like that's places that just don't lend themselves. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways you can go about that, but you can still play up even with doing like the laser focusing for internet ads, you can still play that up very, very well. So it's, it's very easy. In fact, a weird sort of way is there's a way to do like, uh, aug- uh, you could probably do something with like augmented reality, which is a tech thing where you can actually play with people to kind of almost all the play like an internet game where the winning, where they win by showing up at your show. And you can control how many people get there because of how it's set up. There's different ways to do it. Oh, we can talk later. There's also, some, there's also some interesting conversations in crypto to be had on the subject. Same different. Well, yeah, that's the same sort of thing. Yeah. Um, or like uh, when I was, um, what was it? Uh, they did they did a kind of a thing back in, uh, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, where literally like a, uh, some ba- like some I, I want to say it was like a nine inch like a nine, like a nine inch nails record or something like that where they they literally would drop a USB randomly off someplace and uh, you plug it into your computer and it would give you all this information to go to a thing and then from that thing it would let you go to this other thing and it would all in to go to like the record release party with nine inch nails I think it was nine inch nails it may have been somebody different but somebody of that level to the only way you could go to this record release party was to follow all these weird steps. Like all of it, like a weird treasure hunt. Yeah, I wouldn't want to make it impossible, do. but I would. I wouldn't want to make it impossible, but I would like to make it alluring if I could. Um, no, but I mean, it's. I mean, I, I'm just like an extreme example. Yeah, I'd love. Really I'd love for a, for a, for a lean in moment where the person actually has to buy into that to that extent to find themselves at a at a place of reward and and to make it appropriate to their efforts. I would. Um, make sure that my venues were, were very interesting and, and my experiences were immersive. Um, well, that's, that's yeah, sort think, of a... Yeah. yeah, but partnering up with like this, because like every major city has at least a couple of speakeasy style bars. So I think like mm-hmm. leaning heavy to talk to some of those pot places. I mean, there's like 10 here in Austin alone. Uh, uh, so like trying to do something like that with like partnering with like a cool bar like that to do stuff with, which lends a well to that that credit's going to be like, Hey, you want to see the Rob, the, the Rob, you know, the Rob Romeo show. Well, you gotta, you gotta go see the floppy disc repair company to get details, which is the name of one of our uh, speakeasies here. It's called the floppy disc <laughs> repair company. Um, <laughs> That's great. I like that. Yeah, no, it's like, and like, yeah, you like you drive in the building and the building does say floppy disc repair company. So if you don't know, you don't know. And if you do, you still go in and, and like the first room is set up like an old like junky like electronics like store, and you have to you have to figure out on how to get behind there, which isn't terribly difficult. Uh, everything's there to kind of cue in, like figure out how to go. Like, All right, cool. I'm gonna go like that. What's the password? 
Uh, and then there's the thing that you can look at to see what the password is. It's not like you're like you're sitting in the lobby or something for hours. I think uh, like when I was in New York, we, uh, me and Keeter were walking by someplace in Manhattan that was like a pawn shop. She goes, yeah, I know. That's just a speakeasy. There's an actual bar in the back. I go, huh. <laughs> Well, we got to get some place. I kind of wanted to go there just because I like that sort of stuff. That would be amazing. Uh, I like that. I like There's that. one that I like. It's a little bit blown up now, but uh, there's one in New York called uh, PDT, which I shouldn't be talking about because it's called Please Don't Tell, but fuck it. If they are all over the internet, I don't care. Um, yeah. But uh, it's at a place called Criff Dog. It's a little like a lower story, um, three steps down uh, hot dog joint, like a hole in the wall. Yeah. And uh, you go into the phone booth and you dial zero, the wall pops out and you're in a, an underground speakeasy with a jackalope and all sorts of uh, fun things and an absence slow and the whole thing. So yeah, pretty awesome. Sounds, that, uh, my next and they, uh, they actually have a hole in the wall, like a hot dog glory hole where uh, you could order hot dogs from next door and they just pass it through the wall um, to serve <laughs> it. <laughs> that's amazing i will definitely hit that up next time in new york because that sounds so awesome and i'll say yeah i know rob said it was cool for me to come you know he told everybody <laughs> i've been kicked no, out of finer that's true probably will again so that's fair uh, <laughs> Uh, I actually remember one of the times we got kicked out of somewhere. That was fun. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Not proper kicked out, but it was it was close enough. Uh, we were hired um, to do a, a charity event. They asked for burlesque. I guess they had watched the movie once or twice. Um, and they wanted, you know, I, we put it together a bill that was some, some live music and burlesque and sideshow. Um, and it, it was a hair loss, uh, medical hair loss charity. And they didn't quite tell us that the room was uh, mixed ages. And we went on after the, uh, the Frozen uh, sisters uh, sang, do you want to build a snowman? And we, we tried to tone it back as best we could. Um, but we were uh, only uh, asked to stop after that first set that we did. So... Um, we had been using what was the bridal suite in this uh, castle on Long Island, like a nice venue. Um, and I had a photographer there as well, because I was trying to document it a bit to get some more such business. Um, and after we were pretty much dismissed, uh, I had sent everybody upstairs um, to just do their thing for a little while. And... Um, it turned into just this burlesque boudoir photo shoot in the bridal suite. Uh, one of them was taking like full nudes in the bathtub. And uh, then the event organizers came in and things got really tense. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, um, I guess if you're getting kicked out of castles, you're doing something right. The photos were great, by the way. Oh, of course. They had to be. You got to make it worthwhile. I mean, that's, uh, yeah, that's definitely worthwhile. Um, so far, I have not been, but like mostly for us, so like we we generally do the weird bar gigs. Uh, occasionally, we'll do stuff like like for some reason, like we get like like local like because like, uh, like weird local music festivals. And they go, yeah, we want to bring you guys on in between stuff. We're going okay. I mean, we can like do stuff and do stuff proper because like the Trash Fire Side Show, the group I'm part of, and uh, but nothing like to that level. Um, Although we we have we've have, we've been told we can't perform places because they knew what we would do, but I haven't been I, we got preemptively kicked out of places. Uh, like, I think the problem was, existed where I was just far too weird for the markets I started in. Like I I've, yeah. I I was doing more um, sort of private for hire gigs and Gatsby esque business, but I always just had a a little bit more grit in me than that and. Um, some of the kinds of it just I also people have no idea what burlesque is. So if you're in the in the business of working with burlesque artists and you hook them up with gigs and like the gentleman hired uh, the two burlesque dancers because their wife liked burlesque. But then they showed up to the Hamptons house and did one act each and then got paid extra to go home um, after they were paid pretty well to be there in the first place. Um, it, just because they read the room wrong and and someone got offended. It's just, uh, you know, there's a lot of. Um, a lot of pretty prude people out there. No, yeah, I work a lot with burlesquers too. Uh, one of the uh, people that works with Trash Fire, she's a pretty well-renowned uh, 
we're less gardeners who's totally slumming it with us. Uh, but she likes drinking with us. I think that's just how it started. Uh, but, um, but yeah, it's like literally it's, uh, I've seen it happen before. Like people go, Oh yeah, like let's do the thing. And like usually half time time, like, like I think 90% of the time is just with you. Cause yes, my wife loves this sort of thing. Then I cheered for the woman and my wife got upset because I cheered for the woman. And then that's where that ends. That's usually what I see happening. But I don't know. It's, it's, I, I agree that people, people think they understand what burlesque is and they don't like either they think of the movie or they think of the weird old, like they go, I remember Betty page. And then that's what they think of those two things for as being burlesque when really has little to do with either of those. But they also did not know what sideshow is either uh, because it's not terribly common to really understand that sort of thing. Uh, even if you grew up, um, let's say you were, uh, going through your formative years in, in the 70s or something like that, so, you know, uh, you wouldn't have necessarily seen the Coney Island of, of your, the one that inspired all the stuff that you see today. Um, you would have seen uh, a Fred Trump era, um, mostly carcassy Coney Island before Dick Ziggins started planting his flag, you know. Um, so I don't think most people have even a generational me memory of what a sideshow is, unless they're from the Midwest somewhere where it was really popular for, for circuses and sideshows to pop up, uh, on the traveling circuit in, in that era, but younger people would have no idea because it's a really dying breed. There's, uh, maybe five or well, six, uh, tented, tented traveling shows out there. I want to say there are, uh, are, uh, well, there's world of wonders, which is the oldest running, uh, continuously running 10 show uh mm -hmm. that 10, and then american side uh, there's the uh the american circus side show i think is what they call themselves uh which is not quite as old as still doing stuff i think those are the only two like hardcore ones and there's like little ones that spring up for like here's like like six dates here three dates there that sort of stuff i mean yeah. i may be wrong uh but uh that's usually what i see that sort of stuff uh for me uh, i get a side show because of jim rose uh originally like that's like a lot of people like of, of a certain age like myself at least uh because Lollapalooza had the Jim Rose uh traveling circus so a lot right. of those we like to call the new uh the new age well I always call it the new age of sideshow which is those like night like basically starting in the 90s through like about the 2000s as far as that range as far as like Jim Rose Joe Lifto uh Enigma Lizard Man et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, that's a whole level of stuff like that. And half those guys, uh, some of those guys live here in Austin. They just like they've retired here. <laughs> like literally, Joe Lifto works at a bar like within walking distance of my house. Really? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> it's just yeah, I didn't realize it was him until like after until he hassled me a couple of times for like bar stuff, like like just say you're like whatever like my id just expired and so he's going your id's expired i go yeah but as you can see i'm perfectly of age and just uh I just, like he let me through and then after a while we friend on facebook go hey i you you're the guy who's giving me shit in the bar uh but no it's uh but yeah that's like some people see size but like a lot of the joe schmo they, they think it's oh it's like cirque du soleil no it's not like cirque du soleil <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I get, yeah this... I get people. People don't know what to expect out of it. So that's definitely a mixed bag. I see some very traditional stuff, and I see some very like, "Hey, try this, motherfucker!" <laughs> uh, uh, escalated really like the like the, the, um, the suspension crowd really brings it in terms that's, of the uh, kinds of yeah. things they're willing to do to their bodies, you know. Yeah, that's uh, that's a whole that is a whole nother bag of stuff. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, that's a that's a lot of here like the the Texas area. So like a lot of people like uh, Scott's the clown, the guy I work with. Um, he is you know weird sideshow clown, but he's really big into that whole uh, suspension stuff. And I think that's how he initially kind of got started. Was he kind of got into that, and then he figured other stuff out, and he went. Well, I kind of like doing this and that, and then just kind of build from there. But he does suspension stuff, and we hang out. With... Yeah, the, the whole weird suspension crowd is a whole nother level, and then like the flow uh, burners have bring a whole nother level to it too. I don't know how much you guys have flow and burner people up there. 
No, I don't know that I know. I know. Like Burning Man, yeah, like all the people like Burning Man and just like things with like oh, yeah, yeah. hoops and like all that like LED mm-hmm. and like a lot of fire people are really like there's a lot of fire people are really into that scene. Uh, which is so yeah, good. a lot of people in the in the fire groups are definitely into that stuff. For sure. Yeah, which is so fine. It's just like that's that's a whole nother skill set for some of those people who are into that sort of stuff when you go into like for like sideshow or going into the traditional stage work of sideshow there's a whole nother different kind of mindset but it's good it all brings all these people together i i'm gonna i'm gonna always been the opinion anything that's left of center when it comes to popular culture uh is sideshow and a lot in a nutshell because it's it's the weird shit that people are into that you know you know the the prudes or the moms were be really nice to be into, but you know the kids might or the weirdos will be into that stuff, and that's that's sideshow. So, one of my favorite pieces too. is uh, I have um I have a pair of duckies. They just happen to share a body, and um, I like the piece so much because I feel like um, most of the people that I like would instantly just go, "Oh, that's adorable." But even the people that are on the uptight spectrum are there looking at this thing that's clearly strange and somewhat repulsive to them, but they also can't shake the fact that it's cute and they have to reconcile that it's both of those things. It's both incredibly strange and pretty fucking adorable. And, and that's kind of what I love about Sideshow, I guess, is uh, you can find a, an, enough for somebody to grab onto um, and you can break someone's lines if you like to. And, um, Oh. There's, there's always this this um this fine shelf of humanity and the things one is or isn't willing to either put themselves through or watch. Oh, I completely agree. And like, there's some stuff like uh, I know somebody who gets terrified by the idea of broken glass, and so you do anything involving like with like glass walks or even like glass eating. They're they're three blocks away the moment they hear that. Uh, so I get it. Like that, that makes perfect sense. But in the, in the end, they'll, they'll, they'll sit there and watch somebody hang from hooks all day long. So it's like really weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, or they'll watch doing like, whether it's like a fire trick or knife throwing or stuff like that, which is also amazing. Uh, I, I, uh, I actually have, a, a, a like, I, I actually got some knives from Jack Dagger that I keep meaning to kind of learn from. Cause I got them at the last Hootenanny. You know, when those were a thing, uh, hopefully soon. But uh, so that's my next thing. I think I think I got to figure out a really cool bit to do with like knife throwing. I just don't know what I want to do with it yet. I mean, I've been throwing professionally for two years and I still don't know what the bit is. It's really something that I was expecting to feel differently about. And I don't like uh, I, I find, to be honest with you, I'm just going to be like, yeah, this yeah, is probably yeah. some 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 backdoor information for a for a lay audience, but um, you kind of always have to look at what's landing when you deal with people and what's pay- paying the bills too, you yeah. know. Um, and for some reason, after I throw knives, I don't feel like it's the it gets the strongest positive reaction from people. Yeah. I don't feel it's the thing that 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 makes them happiest or encourages them. I feel as though there's something almost standoffish about it, as though well, they're almost like, "Why would you do that? Why would you take it that far? Why?" You know, like they, they start questioning my motive, um, or maybe it's that I'm impish the whole way through a show. I'm I'm in this. My character is kind of based in the chaos that has always been the show. So it's just, okay, so, so, so what the fuck's next? Uh, you know, just because it's just got that thing. And when I go from being this happy-go-lucky, going with the flow, trying my best, still kind of clowny character, to focusing down and throwing knives with my full body into a board where a person's standing, mm-hmm. it it might make people feel differently about me and I don't know what it is, but I'm still trying to examine as I does, as, as the act develops, just what it is that'll, that'll humanize that act a little more. Um, because it, it, it almost feels as though <laughs> like I'm not the guy at the bar they want to talk to anymore after that sometimes. Well, and fair. I don't know what the fix is for that. I just, 
it's just an observation that um, some of the things that we do that are far more innocuous could also get a much more arousing um, applause to it or, or at least buy-in. And um, I want to make people uncomfortable, but I want to bring them back too. Uh, so I need to find the mix on that where um, there's enough pressure and release to make it feel better. Huh. Could be maybe the knife act. It could just be that one, like, you know, the hired show sort of thing. All right, cool. You're hiring me on to do the knife act. Just leave it as, like, its own entity on its own to just be, like, hired out for, for, like, to do a drop in someplace versus, like, having, like, as part of your full, the full, the full experience act. It may not be a part of that. It may just be a separate entity onto itself. Uh, it is a, a great deal of focus. And to be honest with you, some of the times that I do it, I want to make sure that I keep myself at an even keel in a way that I almost feel like limits me, that I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best to be prepared for that thing so much that it might take away from the comfort that I'm feeling that I could just be full uh, wild and improvising. Um, I so it, it, or it might be a thing that maybe that might be the thing for out of the gate, do that first and then descend from there, you descend into the chaos from that, from focus, order into chaos. So you start big, like doing the knife stuff, and then you descend into the weird chaos afterwards. So that way, by mm -hmm. the end of the show, you're all like this, and everybody's cool and groovy about hanging out with you afterwards. I have started moving it from the end of the show to uh, before intermission. Um, so that it's only the first set where I feel that, and then I have the whole second set to be loose and released. Um, that's also also good too has been it, it's been more functional but i i still i'm examining it and I, I know that i'm rather critical of myself so it's not to say that uh this is something that everyone needs to know but um yeah. i just no. i i feel as though there's a way to do it i just haven't got it yet it's and it could just be that too so like playing you know either a just letting it be its own entity separate from the rest of your quote-unquote universe and just be like all right cool like you know joe schmo's like show has hired me on to do a thing so i'm gonna do my knife throw bit and that's all i'm doing or b is you just figure out where it places in or you just at one point you're just gonna go this is the hook and just like that allows you to kind of play with it back and forth it, sometimes it's just like figuring out the wordplay before you start doing it uh, maybe it depends on whatever the stunts you are involved with doing the life throwing may help with that as well, just depending on how you're trying to showcase it. I don't know. It's, you know, you've been doing it for two years. I mean, like, there's a lot of people like, like it's like what they said, but the joke is like, what they say, like, to be a sword swallower, it takes six, it's six months to learn how to swallow a sword and six years to figure out the act. And so, you're only two years in with doing knife throwing, so you still got like at least four to figure out how to make that work. Or you, know, you got it. There's a point in there somewhere. <laughs> Just keep doing it. You'll figure it out. Yeah, um, I, and yeah, I, I'm getting the rust off, and I'm feeling good about throwing right now. It's it's yeah. really just um, it's an act that I've I've been examining because I feel like. There's some stride that needs to find its way in still. Like I feel like I, I feel like bad as fuck when I'm doing the bull whips, you know, because it's it's being able to land like surgically off of someone else, but also off my own body, um, you know, an inch from my nose. Um, it, it's it's cool and it lands and and it gives this people this thing in their lizard brain. The whip cracks and they just they've got the inevitable one of two reactions of that sort of oh shit or oh daddy. Yeah maybe some combination of both but like there's usually some sort of really hard like <laughs> uh, lizard brain reaction in there and that's part of its strength i think well yeah and with what you're talking about as far as your character style the idea of the whips like whipping around very like at least the appearance of it's almost appearing chaotic really lends to that character very well so i get that that makes sense why that would work really well so yeah. Uh, what do you like to do besides besides the traps? Uh, so I actually do mentalism and magic and that sort of stuff. That's how I got started. Uh, when I originally, uh, for the background for yourself and people who are watching this, so um, which we're twenty four. So on March tenth, twenty seventeen, my wife died. I have to start it this way because that's how it, it matters. 
And so uh, we spent the last like five or six years just, I, I just, I'd taken care of her. So I had no real life. And so when she died, I didn't know mm. what to do with myself. Uh, she really loved burlesque and stuff like that. So on the one year anniversary of her death, I, I produced a, a, a tribute show for her. So I brought in like musicians and uh, burlesque performers and stuff like that to perform and raise a lot of money. And then two weeks later, I went to my first great Southern side show, Hootenanny, because in that period of year, I made friends with people like Scabs and whatnot and uh, Nick the Vegan, and they were performing there. So I went. Going, All right, cool. I'll support my friends and circus side show people in New Orleans and partying with them sounds like a great time. And it is. <laughs> and it is. Uh, but I end up like falling in love with the whole idea of the whole world of sideshow. And so a couple of weeks, like, I don't know, like a month or two later, I decided to produce again to see whether or not I could do it and I could draw on my own name versus my late wife's. And then I went, well, I really like sideshow, so I'm going to produce a side sh- like a, a, a little sideshow program. And so I brought in some friends uh, that I, I had made friends with, and like Gigi Deluxe, who I met that year, who's an amazing sports follower out of New Orleans, who came, mm-hmm. to, who first time coming to Texas, came to come to do stuff with me. And then I had some other like Jim McKenzie and like Scab and like a lot of other amazing people. And I really liked it. And I went, oh, this might be something. And so I started producing shows. And then one day, uh, I decided I wanted to get involved, more involved in just like talk. Just, just I was just kind of the talker. I would like introduce the acts, but I would tell stories in between the acts to kind of help create this narrative. Uh, so I didn't just pre- I didn't just produce a show, but I produced it very specifically as far as how the acts were going to play, and then I created a narrative in between the acts as far as telling these little stories that kind of connect everything. And then one day I decided, well, I want to do more than that, and so I was trying to figure out what I could do. In sideshow that didn't hurt. That was the initial thing. I said, I want to do sideshow stuff, but I don't want to do anything that involves pain. Uh, and so I went, oh, you know what doesn't, you know, that's part of sideshow is like magic and mentalism is part of sideshow. Uh, mm-hmm. Because, you know, or at least some stuff is. And so I said, you know, I'm going to do that. And so I started, I learned a couple of things. I had learned, I had learned a really great uh, trick from AJ that first year at sideshow, uh, the Hootenanny. And we sat, like, he sat with me and, like, talked to me, like, an extra, like, 30 minutes about how to make the trick bigger than what he taught me. Like, and I, I noticed he, and so, I, so I, I figured that out. So I wanted to do bigger with that. And then eventually, I think we were doing a photo shoot for the group. And that's when I learned how to do the mousetrap first on my tongue, which I, which it hurts for you guys watching. It does hurt. Uh, and then from there, I just went, all right, cool. What else can I do with that? And I started playing with traps and, you know, I've got really expressive eyebrows, so I can do stuff like that. And then I thought, well, if you do a mousetrap, might as well do shots with it. And so I started doing that. Uh, I also learned to do things like eat glass. Uh, all the tricks I try to learn with mentalism for the bigger stuff, I try to figure out a sideshow element of it to add legit, I don't want to say legitimacy, but uh, weird stuff. Like I do a weird mousetrap. I have a rat trap board that I do uh, mad, uh, a mentalism bit with that. If I succeed, nothing goes bad and hurts me. But if I go wrong, I have rat traps on my hands. Uh, so either way, the audience is entertained. Because that's the other thing I had to figure <laughs> out. Things I would have had. Like, well, that's one of the other things. I had to think about ways to do something that, regardless of the outcome, the audience is always entertained. So that's why I've been trying to figure that stuff out. And mostly, I'm just, if you ask me what do I do, I, I, I make the joke, I go, I'm a sideshow personality and I'm a performer because I like talking about it and, do, and getting people <laughs> involved with it. Uh, but I do do some stuff. Uh, so I, I enjoy doing those things. And I'm always learning more. Uh, but I spend most of my time talking about sideshow and trying to get people involved and like learning the history and all that sort of stuff and trying to convey it, which is what I do every week. And why I do this show is I talk to sideshow performers and we talk about stuff and about what the process is as far as to make it work. Or we talk about random stuff and then I talk to other people too, but, but yeah, that's basically what I do for the nutshell is I basically, I, I do a lot of talking and convincing people to drink and dumb card tricks mostly so uh, yeah bar tricks i learned a lot of bar tricks because like uh harry anderson's one of my heroes and learning all his weird bar tricks is a lot of fun yep so oh yeah that um 
Oh man, what's the uh, our special um his his produced video that he did is that uh, uh hello sucker? So yeah, hello sucker from like like eighty three or eighty four, I think. Yeah, it's yeah. so good. Uh, no, it's it's amazing. And then uh, uh, I've got uh, the modern con man, which uh, Todd Robbins wrote, which has a, a lot of more amazing stuff for that sort of stuff too, which I'm a really big fan of. I recommend. I don't recommend that book. Uh, <laughs> it just no, it's a great book, and it was uh, uh, really fun to. Uh, would you know my New York trip was to meet and talk with him as well. So Todd Robbins. Uh, so yeah, that's what I do is I, I really, I just talk to people. I convince people to pay I, I convince people to come to this show and pay money. That's a lot of what I do. <laughs> so I had a fun conversation with Todd Robbins the other day. Um, oh yeah. One of the things that uh, had popped up in conversation was uh, I had gone to the museum of death in New Orleans and um there are a lot of wonderful things in there uh if you want to come yeah. back to uh post-mortem stuff we can but uh the last thing that we happened to see on the way out the door was a letter um written by albert fish and it was yeah. um the grace the grace bud letter um a letter that he wrote uh to the victim's uh, mother uh, after he yeah. had um eaten her and um kind of made us go like hey <laughs> you want to get a beer <laughs> but uh todd greeted the story with some incredulity because yeah. he happens to know someone who uh is in possession of the real letter not necessarily by scrupulous means that wouldn't surprise <laughs> and, me at all hey, wait a second <laughs> wait a second that can't be the letter <laughs> wait a minute it That's was quite a conversation it went it went yeah it uh, went the uh, conversation ranged from new new kids on the block to nfts to albert fish it was quite a quite a quite an hour in the history of man that's uh that's well that sounds like the very stuff i talked to him about too and like not those specific things but the idea of like across the the gamut yeah i went to the museum of death with the great orbax and uh pepper Klopek from the monsters of schlock <laughs> that was entertaining uh but yeah so uh go to the museum of death especially if you can go with some weird sideshow people even better uh anyway it's wonderful you know what? yeah it is you know what we're just about out of time man uh it's, it's almost been an hour it's been crazy. See, you were worried. I don't it's know. So effortless talk talking about. to you. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, I, that's what I like. That's what I in the end. That's what I do is I talk to people. Uh, so, uh, so everybody, as you can, as you can see underneath Rob Romeo, we've got here the Instagram handle. Follow at Odd World Danger Show on Instagram to keep up with all their deets and dates and stuff like that. They also have a Facebook page. Also go to their website, oddworlddangershow.com to keep track of all that sort of stuff as well. I know you guys just about have a, a new a live live show, which is almost sold out, I think, again. Aren't you guys doing like – or just the first yes, – Yes, we, <laughs> we added a second seating uh, to do a, a late show, and I think that's just about sold out. But if there's any tickets left, you can find it um, on our Facebook page. Uh, yeah, our world danger I, show, or on um, you can send us a um, message on Instagram if you find us there. If you want me to make yeah. you anything, talisman, keep uh keep demons either away or, or or to attract them if you're into that sort of thing. Just hit me up. I'll make you something um, personalized if you're a performer or just a person that wants things. Yeah, we'll talk. Uh, so all right, so uh, thank you, Rob, for uh, tuning in and being part of the show. I greatly appreciate. it. Uh, I miss you, man. I, like, I, like we I know we just met two weeks ago, but like we're already fast friends. I uh, can't wait to see you down the road. Hopefully, sometime soonish, I'll make my way up that way, or you'll make your way this way, and we'll be cool and groovy. Uh, thank you guys for watching, both live and uh, on tape, as it were. I greatly appreciate you tuning in as well. Um, we got a thing happening afterwards, and we got all cool stuff happening next week. Make sure you follow Carney Show on all the social medias. Uh, ne but next week here on the G Spot is uh, another good friend that I met in uh, in New uh, in New York, uh, Miss uh, Miss Cherry Delight uh, will be on the show next week. I know, yeah, she's dropping a new video tomorrow. 
And so we're going to talk about that amongst with other stuff. So it's going to be a lot of really cool. Uh, so everybody be safe, be cool, be groovy. Stay tuned to the channel. There's going to be some fun stuff happening afterwards. And uh, keep drinking, everybody. Thank you.